Hi, and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I'm Marcus, and today I want to walk you through some rounds of Legends of Andor. This is now part two. That's basically Travel Up North, which is an expansion to the base game. As you can see, this game is completely German and I just learned that only the base game has been translated into English by Fantasy Flight Games. So I'm not even sure if this one will make it to the US, but nevertheless I will give you a quick overview. Maybe I will really show you some actual rounds, but I'm not so sure if I will really do a full playthrough of one of the first legends, because I don't want to spoil the experience for you. Of course I will try to translate the legend cards for you as good as I can, but please bear with me. I'm not a native speaker and I'm pretty sure I will not be using the official translations of some of the cities around Hadria basically, but I think I will come to that later. But hopefully you get an understanding of what's going on in this expansion and maybe if this is something you could look forward to. Part 2 of Andor is all about sailing and that's where the Aldebaran comes into play. So you have this new board here where you can upgrade your ship, I come to that in a second, and you have this nice little wooden miniature to represent the Aldebaran on the game board. I will show that to you in a second as well. But let's have a look at the upgrades here. For example, you can upgrade the figure at here. You have to pay the amount of players in gold. So when you play with two players, you have to play two, pay two gold for each of those upgrades. And then you turn those around. And as of now, you would have the figurehead in place. And every time a hero is positioned on this base here during a fight round, he or she would gain four additional strength points and guess what yeah you definitely need it in this expansion but you also can upgrade your stern ballista here this allows you to add your last two dice but i think maybe i will show that to you and you can also go for a second mast which lets you double the amount of movement in respect to the appropriate wind card. And before you ask what the heck is a wind card, this is something that replaces the event cards from the base game. And this would allow you to move the Aldebaran in dependence of the strength of the wind in any direction. So in this wind card, for example, would allow you to move four spaces up north, but I will definitely come to that later. But there could also be a storm arising, and in most cases this will move the Aldebaran completely different place on the game board, and in most cases exactly there where you don't want to be, of course. So, I already prepared the game board, and again it's a huge game board, and again as well it's double-sided. You will have a winter snow landscape on the back side basically showing the same region of Hadria around here but again showing some winter colors. Also new to this expansion is Stinner the Sea Warrior from Wolf Town. He replaces a dwarf who is no longer allowed in the northern region of Hadria here. So if you want to play with him you have to stick to the base game basically. Of course you can still play the game with five and six players if you got the proper expansion for that and guess what it also didn't make it over the pond as far as I believe but nevertheless I will definitely use Stinner here because he's really an asset to solving the quests in Andor. And my second character for today is Chada the Ranger so something like an Avish character here and I decided to go with a female version just to have both sexes in play of course. But as you may or may not know the special abilities and all the stats are the same and really independent if you play with the male or the female side. I also prepared the fog tokens here and just like in the basic legend of the base game of Andor we are not using any gore tokens and as you can see here in this expansion we have four instead of only two. I also prepared the starting wind card but again I will show that to you once I move the Aldebaran the first time so I will definitely explain you the mechanics of movement in this expansion. 
And last but not least, we have the Bard track, so the Hall of Fame basically. This replaces the castle, so you don't no longer have to protect any castle or from being invaded. In this case, you have to uphold your fame. So whenever this bar token reaches the field or the space with a value zero, you immediately lose the game. But the good thing is you can increase your fame relatively easily by uh, defeating any monsters on the board. I think I have prepared most of the stuff, so I think we can directly move into the first legend card. And as in this an expansion, the narrator won't start at space A of the legend track, but on space O, which means we take the first legend card O1. Legend number seven is called the quest for the cartographer. And as usual, the quest and the starting quest will show you some of the new rules, but of course I will explain them to you. So this is something I might not entirely translate for you. I'm not sure, I will check that out. And as you can see, it consists of 17 cards. Yeah, that's quite a lot. But again, these cards are also explaining some of the additional rules to this expansion. Okie dokie, let's start with some flavor text. Of course, you are supposed to run the starting instruction, which I already did, of course, and then we can directly jump into the flavor text here. A gleaming vision of a wizard was calling the heroes of Andor to help the country of Hadria. But the only person who might know the sea route to Hadria was Merrick, the cartographer. He left north months ago and has not returned. King Thoral decided to let the heroes travel north in order to help and fight Merrick. Then we are supposed to place the Aldebaran on the compass rows, which I already did, and we also place the two characters on the Aldebaran as well. Then we are being told where to place the stars, which I also did, so on P, Q, S, V and Z, basically, though these are when the new legend card will trigger and then we would have to roll two dice for the healing herbs and place them on the board accordingly by adding the individual results. So let's do that now. So here we have two healing herbs and we just roll two dice for each and we just add 100 to this result. So that's a seven. So we place the first one on space 107, which is here at the city of ruins. And then re-roll a second time and this is a nine so we have to place the second healing herb on space 109 accordingly and this is basically eastern to wharf town coming to legend card 02 already and it says we are basically doing the same for the gifts of the north which is an entirely also new little items that come with this expansion and again i will explain those as soon as we discover the first one okay let's roll for the first one that's a seven and again we can place one of those gifts of the north to the city of ruins Let's roll for the second one. That's also a seven. And I really decided not to place them on the same space. It really seems to me kind of lame, to be honest. So this is a five, which is fine. So we place this gift of the north next to Storm Whale. And let's roll for the second one. That's a three, which is also fine. So we place the third gift to the north of Wharf Town. Next, the Hall of Fame is explained. So the bar starts on space 4, which I already did. For each creature still on land space, after the next dawn, the players lose some fame, depending on the amount of players. If the bard ever lands on space 0, the heroes automatically lose the game. We also have new rewards. For each defeated creatures, you will be rewarded by either willpower, gold or fame. And you would do that according to the creature table. And as usual, you can split the reward however you like that. And then it says this legend offers two levels of difficulty. And I think as I'm also kind of lame, I think I will play it on the easy mode. So I will check out the next legend card, Grenolin. Grenolin, the bandsman, heard about your travel to the north. Your deed shall not be forgotten, he said. I will sing songs and rhyme ballads to increase your fame. Let me come with you. 
So let's put Grenolin on the board of the Aldebaran as well and you can more or less take him with you so one hero can do that and whenever you defeat a creature Grenolin makes sure you get one extra fame point which can be pretty important at times. And then we are already on legend card 03 which says defeated creatures will be placed on space 90. The narrator will only be moved if two creatures are located here. So unlike the base game the narrator only moves when you defeated two creatures which is also very important because otherwise really things would move up way too fast. So you see here these two spots. Let's check out our task. The first task is before the narrator reaches space V, the heroes have to find Merrick. In order to find him, the heroes have to enter the capitals of the three foggy islands and the city of ruins. As soon as a hero stands on one of those spaces, you are going to read the arrival legend card. There is one legend card for each of those city. For now, we will place Merrick the cartographer on space V of the legend track. You also have to find the draft guards who is hidden under a fog token just like the witch in the base game basically. Each hero starts the game with two points of strength and the whole group receives two additional points of strength and three gold and again you can divide it as you like between the heroes. I guess I will give each hero one strength point. I will give Charter two bucks. Stinner gets only one but of course also one strength point. And again the hero with the highest rank will start the game. In this case this would be Chada with a rank of 25. One last thing to do is to set the time stones on the space according to the amount of player and with two players each player already used up one hour. And then we are finally good to go. Gulls were screeching as the hero set course and so the voyage north began. As already mentioned the Aldebaran starts down there and I think it's definitely a very good idea to split up the heroes I guess. So I might really think of moving the Aldebaran somewhere up here and then maybe one hero will start exploring here and another hero will go to Wolf Town because we really have to go through this fog tokens here and we have to enter those capitals because we have to visit all four of them before we get to know where Merrick is being located. In order to move the Aldebaran, one of the heroes, whose turn it is of course, has to use a travel action. And unlike the base game, you are not just moving the Aldebaran one space, you do that in accordance to the actual wind card. Right now that's a starting wind card and it really is plain and simple. If one hero says, I want to spend an hour to travel up north, you would then check, okay, the current wind speed in direction of north is two. So when, by spending one hour, the Aldebaran will move one, two spaces. Easy as that. Of course, the hero can still use in another hour to go, move into that direction. So he could say, okay, let's move one, two, three spaces here because direction of northeast, we have a wind strength of three and so on. But let's move everything back and think about it a little bit. Chada will start the game and I think she will be using the Aldebaran and I think we will do that as I just demoed here. So I will move the Aldebaran two spaces up north. So that's one and two. And of course, therefore, she has to spend one hour of her day. Then we will pass the rudder to Stinner because of his special ability and it says when he is on board of the Aldebaran and before he actually uses his travel action or after he uses his travel action, he's allowed to move the Aldebaran one space adjacent. So I think this is something that we will definitely do now. So first of all, we will use our free action. We will move the Aldebaran one space up north. Here is a little cliff which means the Aldebaran cannot sail there and this is also not considered a land space so a hero will also not go there. But coming back to the travel action of Stinner we are still in the middle of it and I think I will now sail up 
three spaces northeast. So that's one, two, and three. And therefore, he also has to spend one hour. And now the Aldebaran is adjacent to a land space, which now means a hero can leave the ship. You don't have to necessarily go to, to the wharves here or to the docks. You can directly jump off the board, basically anywhere where a land space is adjacent to that. And I think we will now pass over to Chadar again, who will then move one space here to 102. This would also cost her one hour of her day. So we place Chada here next to Silver Hall, I think is the city. And I think we will take Grenolin with us, which is definitely not a bad idea. As Chada is still traveling, we could still spend some more time to travel farther. And I think this is what we will do. You can also cross land hulls between those dotted lines here. And it says you have to spend two hours in order to pass. This is considered to be a, a ferry boat or something like that. And I think this is what we'll do. So we will spend two additional hours to move over here next to Wolf Town. And as we are still traveling, I think I will move one space further here. So for once, I will discover the fog tokens. And guess what? We already find guards the dwarf. Wow, this is awesome. Really, really, really awesome. But the next thing that will happen is we have found our first gift of the north. And here we have the dust of the mermaids, which you can use before a fight round. And it allows you to exchange the strength points with your enemy. And you would have to discard it after usage. But unfortunately, it must not be used against any end bosses here. But for any other creature, it would be fine. As this is a small item, we will have to place it accordingly here on the character table. But as we have discovered guards already, we have to read his legend card accordingly. First it says, place guards on the space where the fog token has been activated. I will do that in a second. One of the heroes finally found guards, the dwarven trader. Oh, the heroes of under up north. I'm really, I'm really not pleased seeing you here because wherever you appear, there will be trouble around, eh? But what can I do for you? Next, the hero is allowed to roll a white die and on the equipment chart you see a die result next to the items here. The hero gets this item for free, which is kind of nice. So let's hope for something good here. That's a two, which would be the shield. So let's place the shield accordingly. And as you might remember, this shield might be used to prohibit the loss of some will points after a fight round and of course you can also flip it around so you can basically use it twice which is definitely a good thing. Then we place guards on the space where we found him so as of now we can travel there and barter with him. Still we can do that and luckily it was Chana we gave the two bucks and I think I will spend those two bucks to yeah, update her strength by one. So Chadar has become stronger with a space strength value of four, which is also pretty good. And of course, we must not forget to move her time token one hour ahead. Now we come to Stinna. Stinna will spend one hour to leave the Aldebaran and then he will move him one more space ahead and again, we have the well here, which allows us to increase our willpower by three, which is also not a bad thing, as willpower can be used one, two, three, to do some overtime. Of course, he had to spend two hours in order to get there. As we have already found the dwarf, I think it really does not make sense to move into the fog tokens. As of now, I think we can still take one or two of them, but in most cases, they're not providing any good stuff. I think there's one that gives you one strength point, which is cool, of course. There are some who give you some gold, but there are also tokens who would make you lose individual uh, actual willpower points. And I think right now I don't want to do that. So I think I will spend her last hour of the day to move into Wolf Town here. 
arrival in Wharf Town. It seems the once busy seaport was suffering badly from the attacks. Many wharves were destroyed. Still, you could buy the best ships here. As soon as the ship is placed on Space 100, a hero on board the ship can buy actual ship equipment. So whoever moves the Aldebaran here to this space can spend two bucks in a two-player game to buy a ship upgrade. Of course, you could buy more of them if you can afford those. The demand for lumber was always high due to the ship industry. Now we place two tree trunks on space 59. The hero can pick those up and place them left to his strength cube. You can sell them on space 100 for either two willpower, two gold or two fame points. Of course I already placed those lumber tokens here and as mentioned you can take those lumber and place them left to your strength cube. So you have, have at least three strength cubes in order to pick one up. Then you can move back to Wharf Town and sell those for either two gold, two willpower or two fame. But in this case you are not allowed to divide those. You have to pick one of them. And then the card says just continue reading when you have read all four arrival cards and if you've already discovered guards. Unfortunately we only arrived at one capital at this point in time but fortunately we already have found guards. But in order to remember we have visited our first town, we will take one of those star token and place it next to our player boards. Stinner has quite some time, so three hours left without taking any overtime and I'm not sure if I will do any overtime in this very first round. So I think we will move on to this space. So let's see what this tile is bringing us. That's good. We found one piece of gold, which he really needs in order to actually buy some stuff. And I just figured out I did a mistake. This was really a stupid move. I should have moved here first, but I will not take it back now. I will have to live with the consequences, but they're not really bad. So we will move up here to space 75. Oh wow, we gained one strength point. This is awesome. So just like Strada, Stinner also has now four strength points. And by spending his last normal working hour, Stinner will move into the city of Silver Hall. Some silver dwarfs stood next to the entrance hall of Silver Hall. As soon as they learned the hero was coming from under and was a friend of the bugler dwarfs, he was welcomed heartily. Later that evening, enjoying some mad and bread, the silver dwarves were telling about their handcraft and how they loved to create precious jewelry from silver and pearls, which they found in seashells. And guess what? Now it's time to place those seashells. Again, we will roll two dice for each of those. So this first shell goes to space 108. It's basically here next to Wharf Town. Let's keep on rolling. That's a two. So the second shell goes here, which is definitely a good thing because we can sell those shells back in Silver Hall. Let's roll for the third shell. That's a nine. So this goes here. Wow, this is really a good spot. We should definitely move there. And the last shell will be placed at the city of ruins. Also, this is also a place where we definitely have to go to, but in order to continue or move on with the legend, we definitely have to go there. So, and I think we get a lot of good stuff over there. All those shells have a value printed on the backside and we can sell those shells according to this value for any combination of gold, willpower or fame. But of course we have to travel back to Silver Hall. And I think in this very first legend, this is not very likely, we found it in our um, gaming experience that you are not really yeah, taking care of those too much. But of course we are allowed to keep the star as we have visited our second capital. Okay, both our heroes have more or less reached their normal working day and I think we will end the day here. It's now the turn of Chada, so she will go first in the next round again. And just like in the base game, the first player will go here into this space, whereas the second player will go here at the dawn space. 
and at the end of the day and also the night we will continue with a new day basically first thing to do would be to reveal a new wind tile then we would move all the creatures or the gores nerexes and whatever they call just cannot recall them then we would resolve the bard then we would have a wreck face but in this very first legend we are not using that's why the x is there then we would replenish the wells and of course last but not least we would move the narrator one space ahead but let's start with a new wind card so we will discard this one and we'll reveal a new wind card and we have to put the, the little dot here shows where north actually is and you really have completely different wind situations from day to day Right now we don't have any creatures on the board, which is definitely a good thing. So we also don't have to move the narrator. We can skip the wreck phase. We would be allowed to replenish the well down in Silver Hall. And finally, we would move the narrator to space P, which also means we would have to read the next legend card. Icy sheets of rain were gushing down on the grey sea. Upon this side, it was not hard to believe that many merchant ships fell victim to the stormy sea. Let's put some creatures on the board! Okay, first we have to place a Nerax here on Latin number 1 and then another Nerax goes to space with a Latin number 4. They always move according to those white little arrows here and they will always try to reach the capitals of these foggy islands in order to bring down our fame track of course and the Nerexes are accompanied by an Arok really huge guy and I think he brings 24 strength points and will roll five white dice in order to fight the heroes and then we have to roll three times in order to bring three gores into the play as well. So let's see where the first one is going to. That's the seven, which means the city of ruins is not such a nice place anymore. Second goes to 106, which is all the way up here. And the last one goes to 110, which is close to storm whale here. The card also explains what happens when two creatures are on the same space. So you basically follow the rules of the basic game. You would move the creature one space ahead. And it also says a creature can be placed on a cap or several creatures can be placed on the capital. But the more creatures you have on a capital, the more fame you would actually lose. And last but not least, the card also is explaining you how to fight those sea creatures but i think i will explain that when i come there okay this was the first day in hadria basically north of andor i really hope you enjoyed my little walk through so far i you guessed it right i will stop here for now not sure if i will continue i might consider really doing one more episode in order to show you some of the more um, advanced mechanics of really fighting a sea creature possibly also to show you how to lose a fame point but as i said in the beginning i'm not sure if i will do a complete playthrough here as i don't want to spoil you the whole first legend hope to see you soon in one of my next videos and as usual until then bye bye <laughs>